We steal the waves in the air and we never give them back. We are. 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 Lo-fi poli-sci. Yes, we are. Oh, yeah. Lo-fi poli-sci podcast coming at you with that Thursday edition of that Lo-fi global news. Straight to it, the news fresh off that press. And to China we go. And let me start by asking you, you ever wonder, what's the difference between socialization, indoctrination, and brainwashing? Yeah, me too. Well, China, whatever your thought is, has decided that the thought of their president, Xi Jinping, his ideology, is so important and so good for the people that from now on, it's going to be taught in all schools to all students across the country. And I know some of you people would straight call this indoctrination. But couldn't you argue, if it's just good ideas and common sense stuff, that teaching it is, in fact, a good thing? I mean, some people call the teaching of evolution or climate change in schools the indoctrination of the youth. Who are we to say that the teachings of Xi Jinping's ideology is, in fact, indoctrination? I think perhaps a more useful take would be to actually go and see what this means. I mean, really, what if his ideology is, in fact, that 2 plus 2 equals 4? I mean, really, you don't know if it is or is not indoctrination until you go and have a look for yourself. And then you can decide for you if it's indoctrination or not. Perspective, people. Always about that perspective. Now we're moving way west, to Western Africa, in fact, and the country of Nigeria. And tragically, normally, Nigeria's in the news for having students kidnapped for ransom. It's been a reoccurring issue in the country for some time, especially this year. Uh, This summer has happened several times. And even... Kidnappers taking hundreds of young students at a time. However, this time, it wasn't youngsters kidnapped. And it wasn't any ordinary school attack. When unknown gunmen this past week went out into the country's top military officer's academy and abducted a person. People, this is big. I mean... It's already a big deal that Boko Haram controls large portions of northern Nigeria. It's a big deal when gangs abduct students for ransom, regularly and by the hundreds. And it's a big deal that the government and the military seem not to be able to do anything much about either of these two issues. But it's a completely new big deal when gunmen attack your military's officer's academy, kill people, and then abduct someone. And we're waiting to find out more updates, and the government and military are surely investigating this hardcore-like. But we currently know very little, and we'll definitely update you more as we find out. And also, another little update, we just read a little blurb that Nigeria is accepting Russian military help. So coming up this next week, we'll be looking in to see what exactly that means, too. All right, people, now it's time for another one of our newest segments and another one of our newest games. It's time for that lo-fi global trivia. Oh, yeah. Five questions in five seconds to answer each and keep track of all that lo-fi loot you win to redeem for a special end-of-the-season prize. Question number one. What's the largest country in the world by geographic size? In five, four, three, two, one. And if you said... Russia, then you are absolutely right. Question number two. What's the country with the largest coastline in the world? Mm Mm-hmm. I bet you're wondering, is it still Russia? Because they surely have a lot of land and coast up there in the north. And three, two, one. Survey says, it's Canada, in fact. That's right. Take a quick peep at the maps. Look and see for yourself. All the zigs and zags of their northern country. Question number three. What's the smallest country in the world? And five, four, three, two, one. The smallest country is Vatican City. Yeah, and I can hear you bitching from here. But it's a city state. It's not a country. And to that we say, get out of here with that argument. There is no minimum size requirement 
to being a country. That's just ridiculous. But if you want to know the number two, just so you know, it's Monaco. Now you know. Question number four. What's the happiest country in the world? Oh, and I know you're going to be complaining about this one, too. Even the fact that how can you measure such a thing? But in reality, you all know where the answer is going to be already. So three, two, one. The survey says Finland is, according to the World Happiness Report 2020, the happiest place on Earth. Uh huh. And finally, question number five. What's the freest country in the world? And I'll even give you a little bit of a hint for this one. There's a three-way tie for first, or a three-way tie for third, whichever you prefer. Three countries, freest in the world, and five, four, three, two, one. And our three freest countries in the world, you already know where it's going to be, too. It's Finland, Norway, and Sweden. Man, they get all the good fun ratings out there. And that's this Thursday's edition of that Lo-Fi Global Trivia. Leave your score below to let everyone know just how much you know about the world. Now let's move on over to Central and Eastern Africa, to the country of Kenya, and in particular, their capital. In Nairobi, there is now... A fine of one hundred up to five thousand dollars and a jail sentence between six to twelve months for all of the following urinating in undesignated spaces, spitting on the street, riding motorcycles on footpaths, loud music, smoking in undesignated places, a few more things, and last but not least, for blowing your nose in public without a handkerchief or a tissue. Oh yeah, Nairobi, Kenya is getting serious about their hygiene. And why not, I say? You ever see someone wipe their nose or their mouth with their hand, and then they go ahead and open a door or go to shake someone's hand who you know they didn't see them wipe their face, but you're thinking, oh, that's gross. I was actually going to go through that door, but now I'm going to just go somewhere else. Yeah, you know you've seen the person. And you know what? You may even be that person. Well, stop doing it. It's just gross. Be kind. Be clean. Get your hygiene on, people. And now we're honestly going somewhere I generally don't like going. But for this story, I couldn't pass it up. And you likely already know where we're going with this one. That's right. We're going to the United States and to California to be specific. But we're traveling back in time. The year is 1991. The movement is grunge. The band, Nirvana. And the album, Nevermind. And you know the one we mean. You've seen the t-shirts. The album with the naked baby swimming with a dollar bill on a fish hook for the album cover art. Yeah, you know the one. Well, that baby is now 30 years old and suing Nirvana for that picture. He's suing 15 people for $150,000 each, for a total of $2.5 million. And they're using words like sex exploitation, child exploitation, child pornography, and quite a few others. And people, this is a big deal for a lot of different reasons. This is a lo-fi must-read because the different views on this album cover, the charges being levied against Nirvana and company, they really get to the core of what a society thinks is acceptable or not. And you know what? Let's get a conversation going with this one, people. Was Nirvana wrong for that album cover? And do they owe the person money for it? Right in. I'm really curious your thoughts. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. The mighty, majestic, crafty, witty beaver used to be plentiful in England some hundreds of years ago. However, they were hunted a lot, to the point where there's no more beaver in England, really. But now, there's a conversation going on about, well, reintroducing them to the rivers of England. I mean, really, we have the means to do all kinds of things like this, as far as the reintroduction of native animals into their habitats. But there's a lot of hesitancy, and now a 12-week review it's going to happen to see. Should we really do this? Because every time we introduce animals into a habitat, into the wild, something almost always goes astray. 
an unseen consequence, as if saying, Leave it be, people. Don't meddle. I mean, did you know there's a real conversation going on right now, and has been going on for a while? Though the past few years it's been a bit quiet, which makes me think they shoved the conversation and just started doing it in secret. But about bringing back the woolly mammoth via their current cousin, the elephant? Interesting stuff, don't you think? So I guess what I'm trying to say, what I'm going to go out with for today is, to you lo-fi listeners out there, how do you feel about Jurassic Park? Write in and let me know your thoughts. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode of Good News Friday. And translation needed, I don't speak sports. Yeah, you know you want to hear my stupidity, don't you? Always remember that lo-fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off. <laughs>